to take, just uh, going to politics for a second. Are that you is why I'm here. Are you su <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that little diversion no, are, there. Are, are you surprised, People need to know. Uh, Dr. Resnick, are you surprised <laughs> that... My late mother would have loved that. Ber Bernie, <laughs> Sanders, like Bernie Sanders has cratered the way that he has. I mean, if you look back before Super Tuesday, Joe Biden was on life support. He was an afterthought. And all of a sudden, you know, he caught fire. Uh, Clyburn in South Carolina gave him his endorsement. He resoundingly won through Super Tuesday. He won the next round of primaries. And tonight, he's apparently had a clean sweep, if we're to believe the early numbers from Arizona. Are you surprised? I mean, I didn't see Bernie Sanders really step on any landmine. The extent to which Bernie Sanders, as a candidate, has cratered. In fairness to Bernie Sanders, I wouldn't say that he's cratered. I would put it as Bernie Sanders hit a wall. Mm. And the first wall he hit was in South Carolina, which is always Joe Biden's firewall. Large African-American vote. Bernie Sanders has not done well with African-American voters, and we saw that play out. The next series of states, Super Tuesday, Big Tuesday, uh, a week later, and now whatever they're calling our Tuesday, <laughs> Coronavirus Tuesday, perhaps. Uh, but the states that followed all set up very well for Joe Biden. Again, large numbers of African-American voters, places where Joe Biden could do well, and he has done well. And when I say Bernie, Bernie Sanders hit a wall, maybe a ceiling is a better def description, because what he's shown is he has not grown his support since 2016. That's what you would expect with a candidate running for a second time, perhaps, who's been through it, has more experience than others, actually more experience than Joe Biden running for president. Uh, he actually won some states, but he never grew his, his voter base, didn't grow them. I think you're going to see that tonight here in Arizona, looking at some of the early results. Joe Biden is ahead of, uh, well, ahead of uh, Bernie Sanders by 12 points here in Maricopa County. That lead is likely to grow. And it's likely Bernie Sanders might not get to the 40% or so he got four years ago when he lost to Hillary Clinton. And that's, you know, bedeviled Bernie Sanders throughout this, this string of primaries uh, over the last several weeks. Cannot break through, uh, cannot grow his Latino support, and in particular cannot get older voters. Cannot get older voters, and those of us who have covered election for a long time know it's the older voters who decide who wins or loses. Let me, let me run something by you. To me, if you look at the two candidates, Bernie Sanders has never strayed from this image, and in fact has become increasingly so, as this sort of radical, crazy, Berkeley professor screaming to get out in the streets and, and march and protest. And Joe Biden, to his credit, has become more and more presidential as the weeks have gone on. And I think right now, in this age of the pandemic, and, and possibly uh, when you look at the current administration, people are looking for a more traditional presidential presence. And I think Joe Biden appears to be that. I think it's fair to say people right now are looking for a leader. This is a moment that calls for a leader. Uh, Donald Trump is being tested. We'll see if he rises to the occasion. Uh, Joe Biden is now presenting himself as that leader. And in fairness to, to Bernie Sanders, I have followed Bernie Sanders for most of my adult life because I grew up in Montreal. And I saw Bernie Sanders when he was mayor of Burlington, Vermont, just 90 miles away. We'd see him on our TV screens uh, every, every night because he was active in, in Vermont politics and remained so for many years. And I can tell you, Bernie Sanders has not changed. He is who he's always been. And in fact, many view viewers, uh, many voters, I should say, view that as authentic. And it is. Bernie Sanders is the real thing. He hasn't strayed very far from who he was. You can argue he's inconsistent on many positions, and sure, any politician is, and he's a politician. But Bernie Sanders is who he's always been. He's authentic. It turns out, on a second try, that might not be good enough to get him to the White House. People don't always, though, especially depending on what time we're living in, want a guy who's going to constantly be on the attack and want to brawl with his opponents, as opposed to someone who can lead and, and fight when necessary. 
Well, more, more specifically in regard to the moment we suddenly find ourselves in, I mean, who saw this coming last right. December, just a few months ago? The moment we find ourselves in, Bernie Sanders is talking about a revolution, right? We're going to change the healthcare system. We're going to change the way we pay for education completely and overhaul a whole bunch of other things. Right now, we've got bigger problems to deal with. Well, that's right. just, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, this if is a, a survival moment for business and for many Americans. I don't think there's an appetite for a revolution right now. At another time, maybe, maybe there would be. Well, there's a question whether there was an appetite for a revolution again a few months ago uh, versus now, but certainly now there isn't. Right. It is, how do we survive this? Yeah. We all know that politics is a game of timing and, <laughs> and maybe he landed in the wrong time. Yeah. Uh, all right, Bram, thanks. We'll check back with you in a couple of minutes and see you again later on tonight at 10.